Well, good morning and welcome back to the channel. It's a glorious day here in Kent today. We've got beautiful blue sunny skies, which are not ideal for the sort of photography I like doing, but I've got to make the most of it. And I'm on probably the first outing um, of quite a long time, actually. I know I've gone up to a couple of places and done dog walking, but that's relatively local. But today I'm actually driving to the National Pine Eatum at Bedgebury, which is near Lamberhurst in Kent and I'm going to obviously have a nice walk around there with the dog. The place opens at 8 and it's about half past 7 at the moment so it will take me 20 minutes half an hour to drive over there and uh, I've got the A1 with me. I've got both, um, um, well all three of the Tamron lenses and I've got a polarizer in case I need it. There's a lake there so there might be some reflections to uh, sort of subdue a bit and um, I don't know what I'm going to find. I'm hoping it'll be glorious. Well, I'm sure it will be glorious. So come along and uh, let's go. Let's see what we can find and have a nice walk around at the same time. So we'll speak to you when I get there. Well, um, while I'm driving along, I'll just briefly talk to you about what it is I'm hoping to achieve today. Number one, and most importantly, getting out. <laughs> And you can't believe, well I'm sure a lot of you can believe how much of a problem being stuck in for so long has been for all of us. Um, I'm lucky I live in the countryside so I do get pretty good access to some nice country within walking distance of my house which uh, is quite pleasant to say the least. But there's only so many times you can feel inspired photographing an area that you know inside out and intimately and in many ways it's a challenge to try and make the most of your local area but I am getting out today and the second reason I'm coming out is I've not really given the Sony A1 or the Tamron lenses a really sort of good test of their capabilities so in a controlled way what I'm hoping to do while we're at Bedgebury is to basically get uh, well I don't know what I'm going to get I'm not sure what state the foliage will be in because it's uh, it's only the beginning of April. There allegedly are bluebells in Bedgebury, although I've never been there at this time of year. Uh, they might well be starting to come out, which obviously will add a new dimension to what I photograph there, which will be good. But there are a series of a large number of different tree types there, um, being the National Arboretum, Pine Eatum, I think is the correct term. Um, obviously, it's predominantly pines that are based there, but that's good from my point of view because pines are relatively evergreen, which means you can photograph them more or less at any time of the year. Anyway, uh, the sun's low in the sky and the lighting conditions are going to be uh, going to be are harsh so I don't know how or what I'm going to get. I'll just walk around and look for inspiration and Ozzy will have a damn good job wandering around sniffing out all the trees and bushes and enjoying himself so come along with us and let's see what we get. Well, here we are, Bedgebury Arboretum. Um, I'll spin you round. The cloud, as I said, is actually moving across, so we're going to get some broken sunlight, which is a good thing. So, as you can see, it's quite an impressive area, and I'm by the lake near the entrance. And I'm going to wander around and see what we can find. Getting set up for the first shot here, and basically, I'm virtually straight into the sun, which is really causing quite a a wide sort of uh, range, dynamic range here, which is making it really quite difficult. But if I spin you around, I'll show you what it is I'm taking a shot of. Right, I've got the camera obviously on the tripod here, and from the little lake just over here, there is a little stream running off which leads down the valley to some more lakes further down. But just in the distance over there, which you can hardly see, is fine old oak tree which has got some nice moss on the branches coming this way and because there's no leaves on it the shape of the tree is really quite pleasant so what I'm doing is I'm actually framing this up so that the stream is coming in here like that and leading down in front of the tree we've got some nice uh, yellow primroses on the bank here and the backlighting is showing the uh, the moss on the branches on the tree so I'll take that shot and we'll focus on the tree branch there. Eighth of a second f16 and we'll have a two second timer because that's what you do, or that's what I do. 
it wouldn't let me put the two second timer on for some reason I can't be bothered to fathom out here so that's the first shot quite pleasing I'm sure with a bit of post-processing that will come out quite nicely so we'll Um, I've stopped in the shade. I've stopped in the shade because there's a very fine bit of lighting, lighting up one of these very, very, very fine pine trees behind you guys. Let me uh, spin you around and I'll show you the shot I'm setting up for. Oh, I managed to get the flip to work this time. Over the other side here and up there, beautiful old uh, pine tree with two whacking great branches coming off to the right and then a darker pine tree arching behind it into the frame here. And what I've set up for, and I can show you this on the phone because I'm using the phone to do this at the moment, is that's the framing I've got because I've got the 70 to 300 mil lens on and I'm going to take that shot so let me just try and show you how this application works. I can just, I've got the focus points set up and I'll take a shot there using the iPhone to do the work for me I don't have to touch the camera I've got something like ISO 200 f8 minus third four hundredth of a second and although the tree is moving I think a four hundredth of a second should be enough to stop that so I'll take a second shot just to make sure to be on the safe side and that beauty of this application now, this Play Memories application from Sony, is that um, I think I mentioned in I think I mentioned in the last video, or the one that I did up in Beg uh, sorry in um, Albury Hill a couple of weeks ago, that um, <coughs> for the A1 they've upgraded the application so you've got touch, full touch support, so I can control the camera completely from the phone, whereas the A7R4 you couldn't set the focus point, you couldn't actually uh, move the focus point around, and if I'm doing focus stacking in particular, that's something I want to be able to do without touching the camera, and this gives me that, which is excellent. So that's that shot in the back, and I'll put it up in a minute, let you have a look at and the clouds creeping in, it's getting darker as I'm talking, and Ollie's getting cold because we're in the wind. So we'll move on and see what else we can get. Well, I found my next shot. Uh, it's this rather fine tree. Uh, it's quite exposed and a lot of the growth at the top, but uh, it's got a really amazing trunk. Look at that for an entangled web of tree and I've put the 17 to 28 on and I'm really quite close I'm only about a meter and a half away from the tree on the right hand side here so I'm having to focus stack this shot so I've used the um, the application and basically I'm focusing here 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 and here which we will do now 15th of a second f11 one two three, four, and there we are. That's another one in the bag. <laughs> 